Hey all and welcome back to Pokemon Sword. It's DLC time, baby. Pack one, to be precise. So if you've paid that lovely Nintendo toll, you can take a trip with the rest of us to the Isle of Armor. Now, a little bit of a debate as to where the Isle of Armor is situated. I thought at first it was Ireland, because it's roughly to the west of a flipped over and reversed Galar map, which is basic which is basically the UK at that point. But Little Birdies Online told me, which is to say I read some stuff on like V and Twitter and so on, that it might more be the Isle of Man than anything. And honestly I can see that because there's not much Celtic influence in the Isle of Armour. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's not just a little birdie that says that it's based on the Isle of Man. It's the actual Pokemon Twitter account. Ah, well. Um, so, official Pokemon UK says that Isle of Armor is based on or inspired by the Isle of Man, and the Crown Tundra, which we will obviously get to explore later in the year, was inspired by Scotland. Um, I do find it slightly odd that they decided, you know, to go with the Isle of Man rather than Northern Ireland, considering, you know, the you're looking at the UK, kind of constituent parts of its uh, <laughs> the countries that make up the UK. But there we go. Well, I mean, there's no Wales representation here. It's just Scot Scotland and England mostly. I love this little animation. Yeah, this is pretty great, I would say. But yeah, like to be fair, they are fictionalising it. So if they want to take some creative liberties and just stick the Isle of Man over to the east of England, then they can do that. It works for me. <laughs> I mean, as you said, completely fictionalised version of a country. Basically, it's just based and inspired by the UK. It's not like it actually is, so it really doesn't matter. And that gives me a chance to get my one really big complaint about this DLC out the way off the bat. Why is it spelt wrong? Why did they not use the English spelling of the word armour? Well... Um, You're not wrong. I'll do you one better than that. How come in Detroit, become human, is the fucking word collar spelt with a U? It's set in Detroit, America. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I swear they're just making a sharp. Like, to be fair, this is something that Nintendo games have a bit of a history with because I know that Paper Mario Color Splash was spelt wrong in the UK release as well. Okay, right. Uh, well, that's a fascinating uh, topic of discussion there. Now is when we come to the version differences. Depending on whether you're playing Sword or Shield in the DLC, you'll be about to face a different character. Since we're playing Sword, we get introduced to this lass here. Her name is Clara. She is a poison type wannabe gym leader in that she's training to be one. And she has a, what I would assume is like a Venomoth or whatever the Moth in Gen 3 is called hairpiece. But funnily enough does not use either in her team. So what is going on? I know. I mean, so it would be Dust Stocks. I mean, I'd say that that looks much more of a Dust Stocks inspired headpiece than anything else. But yes, Clara. Um, so her name is uh, based on the um, flower, uh, which is, well, plant, which is Sephora flowersens, um, which I believe in uh, Japanese it's um, Carrara, which is or Clara, how it's sort of said. Um, so obviously, as with the uh, flowers and plants for literally everything in the Pokemon world, um, you go to German. Uh, French, Spanish, and Italian, and she's called Sephora, more literally from the, the name. Okay. The others, apart from Korean, are all transliterations. Um, the Korean is a little bit more clever um, because it her name is Dojong in that, which comes from Do Dungom Ui Jipang I I can't speak Korean, you have to forgive me. Um, but literally, that is Thief Staff. Um, which is the colloquial name for Flora Flavisons. Okay. I'm assuming there's some reference to poison in there, because this bitch toxic. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, but, on that point, her uniform number is 881, uh, which can be read as Yabai, which means dangerous. Oh. Not that I'd actually call her that dangerous, she's pretty easy throughout the entire... <laughs> entire... <laughs> 
DLC. <laughs> well, she uses, like, one of the most common, like, weak types. Uh, in, at least in my eyes, like poison, attack it with ground or attack it with psychic. Jobs that are good. And there is a counter to the psychic weakness coming up, but you're not going to have to worry about that until like near the end game of the Isle of Armor DLC. Exactly. Obviously, if you're playing shield, then you'll get Avery, who is a uh, he's a psychic type user, isn't he? Yeah. So Avery's name comes from um, savory, which is a type of plant. I mean, particularly it is the satyreja, um, but it's a type of... They kind of come up in herbs as savory. It's a type of herb. So that's where his name comes from. And But his uh, name is a little bit various, depending on sort of country. So Japanese, it's literally savory. We get avery, which is a more normal name. Germans, Severio, Spanish, Dreo, French, Satinin, um, Italian, savory, and then the others are just transliterations or transcriptions. Um, his okay. uniform number She's is dropped, 26. She's by the way. Oh, well, you see. Short work. Um, avery's number is 26, which can be read as Otsumu, which means brain. So basically, sword players get the better deal because, like, look at her thighs. Um, <laughs> that, that's where my brain goes. <laughs> while I'm not disputing the thickness of said thighs, I found Avery to be a much more enjoyable character, and his character arc felt more genuine. Clara, by the end of this, she relents a little bit, but it doesn't feel as genuine as Avery is. I have to say, I am going to have to go and have a look at what Avery's arc looks like because i remember sort of sitting through clara's and just going yeah you're just a cow i don't like you like i think her design is awesome and i think the idea of her character is fun but like it just comes across as grating especially in comparison to um the two other key characters that we uh, meet in the isle of armor and it's just like yeah you you were a choice love well, don't you worry, there's other characters more than pick up the slack if Clara's not your thing. We can go get more stuff! Hooray! I don't do any of it! Hooray! Maybe in the Crown Tundra I will! <laughs> <laughs> no you won't, you'll forget by then as well. <laughs> well, that's your job as co-coms to poke me until I do it. Are you still wearing them fucking shoes you said you'd change? Fuck's sake. <laughs> I forgot, what could I say? With the Isle of Armor comes a bunch more new Pokemon roaming in the wild. You may have seen a gigantic, actually to scale, Whale Lord in the background. You can go catch it. It's level 80. Have fun. Well, we say that the levels are somewhat scaled, depending on whether you've beat the game or not. And that's kind of a consistent thing throughout this DLC pack, at least the first half of it, in that it recognises that you've beat the game and... A lot of the battles you'll have are around the level 60 sort of mark. I believe that if you're part way through, then it scales depending on how many badges you've got. Mm -hmm. I get the idea and I appreciate it. I just think that level 60, after you've beaten the game and you've had the game to dick around for a little bit, is still a bit on the low side. I was still kind of overpowered with my team that I had. And I ended up having to just shuffle a few things around so I wasn't completely obliterating everything in sight. Nice name there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he's going to evolve eventually and he will need a suitable name. You're not wrong. Um, I'd say I probably disagree slightly, if only because I didn't play too much after I beat the game. So, uh, I, I mean, I did it up to a certain point. Like, I made sure that I did sort of the main post-game stuff, so obviously we're still partially over-leveled for this, but sort of the level 60 to 70 mark, I think, is pretty fair because you have got to consider the fact that there are potentially a lot of people who played the game and then put it down, so they might not have done much further past um, beating Swordburst and Shieldbert. Um, so they're not necessarily going to be hugely leveled. I mean, as you can see with Tom's team here, obviously it's not his main team, it's the playthrough team, um, but it, it seems the right area for it. Um, I'll be interested to see what the levelling is like in Crown Tundra, as to whether they 
keep it in this 60 to i think it's like well obviously the warlord's level 80 um but for the main bit of it within this 60 to 75 mark um or whether they do up it um i suspect they will try to up it but we'll see cool little thing coming up here oh what's that just poking its way out the ground it's clipping it's clipping horribly <laughs> it's meant to be underground it makes sense <laughs> did it diggler diggler dig 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 trio 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 not yet richie not yet this npc has a quest for us you see this thing here you want some alolan pokemon go find all 151 scattered throughout the isle of armor now you might think to yourself that's that's it's kind of shy but no the isle of armor is actually well designed in terms of geography and whatnot and is much more fun to explore than the wild area in the main game is because it actually has levels of elevation and whatnot i would say that on the whole isle of armor's wild area is exactly what the wild area should have been from the off because as you said it has different levels of elevation and um, but also it feels much more lively and lived in and it doesn't just feel so odd like it feels like the entire world is connected whereas obviously the wild area in the main sword and shield is just this one area that sort of stretches around through the middle of the the, the region mm -hmm. and that's it whereas this you've got people roaming about you've got pokemon running about you've got sort of all the different things happening and it feels connected and it sort of goes with what we were saying i think during the main playthrough when we were talking about how it would have been really cool if the roots were effectively wild areas and treating yes. it more like that yeah. because that's effectively what this is it's a uh, series of roots turned into a wild area and it works so hopefully and i'm thinking more sort of next generation if they decide to keep up with this wild area idea that even if it's not just one massive wild area even if it's like three different wild areas cobbled together as long as they are of this quality we should be all right I'm fine with it, like a linear route every now and then, but when the majority of them are mostly like straight lines with maybe a bit of a, a curve or a kink in them, that's getting to be a little bit on the, um, I don't want to say lazy because there's still work put into it, but... <sighs> it's just a bit bland really, isn't it, by comparison? Bland is the word I'm looking for here. It's like they do their job, but could do better really now we're getting to the main crux of the isle of armor or at least we will do once i decide to stop just dicking about and <laughs> have, having fun dare i say it in this let's play finding diglets looking at all the wild pokemon and whatnot and richie is right it feels like a living thriving area whereas the wild area in the main game as much as i like it feels more man-made it doesn't feel wild it feels like a tourist trap yeah and also it just it's just sort of there like it doesn't feel like it has a reason for existing <laughs> well it, it seems like very much a test of concept sort of yes. thing more so than like it feels like it ended up being pushed as a selling point for song shield but it, at the same time the actual execution of it it feels like it was just someone's like proof of concept just saying like you know what if we had this open world pokemon game where you could see all the pokemon wandering around and it was like oh yeah we could just stick that in and like this feels i know i'm basically reiterating what you guys said but this feels like a more realized version of that and it works all the better for it now there is the argument why should you have to pay for that but this and the crown tundra are basically all the content you would get in a third version of the game. And instead of going that route, they decided to go the DLC route, which is fine by me. I'm a hopeless Pokemon shill, but I feel it's much better to have the content and get to it right away rather than having to play through another 15 hours just to get to the new stuff. There's some things that would have been nice to have, like, I don't know, 
gym leader refights and whatnot. I'm not entirely sure whether they're coming or not. But that and like trainer battles in the Isle of Armor are like the only things missing from this for me. Yeah. Going back over a little bit what I said during the main playthrough when these were first announced, I can kind of see the argument for why people might have preferred a third version in this particular case. And that's because the main game story is a bit shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, it's the main game that needs fixing this time around. Like, although the post game was underwhelming as well, like, that's probably less of a priority for most people than just the main venture. And so, that again, it doesn't justify the original version being a bit shit, but out of the extra enhanced possibilities, I can kind of see why people might lean one way or the other this time around, honestly. Oh yeah, I, I definitely get that. I think it, Pokemon is always gonna, I think, sit in that weird place of, and it, it's it's purely based on the fact of you're always gonna have sort of the whole multiple version approach, and because we have been trained with that three game um, sequence, to sort of part of it will be nostalgia, part of it will be that um, wanting to have the game fixed i suppose um but then equally i would say that right now in the way that um gaming is right now this makes more sense because there's you'd always already have the sort of questionable business practices of like two versions so adding a third version is a bit little bit like you look at it and you just go yeah you just want my money which is obvious but yes. mm -hmm. this feels a little bit this feels less unconsumer friendly it's slightly better optics yeah <laughs> yeah it, it looks better and also to be fair i don't think you can necessarily rescue sword and shield no no at this point as it is um you would need to do sort of a complete reworking of it and really it's not worth the money or the effort for Game Freak to do that they would be much better off doing these dlcs and giving it a bit more sort of long-standing extra quality but then putting more of those resources into the next generation mm -hmm. where they stand a much better chance of getting that um goodwill back because new generation new chance to start over and you can get the hype there and sort of hopefully solve your issues you can't solve something that has caught well you can i mean i think was it Diablo 3? Oh, yeah. Oof. Like, started off, completely everybody hated it. Um, but then many years later, they finally sort of fixed the issues and it wasn't a half-bad game by the end of it. Well, I, th I think a more extreme version of that would be Final Fantasy fourteen. I was just about to say, yeah. <laughs> so it is possible, but you do have to completely rework everything that people hated. And it is always a question of... Is it worth it to put that effort in? And for Pokemon and the sort of timescales that they work on, I would say it's it's not. Like, the cycle's generally so quick that by the time the next generation comes around, obviously people will still remember all of this, but if it fixes the issues, they won't really care, and uh, Sword and Shield will just sort of be in that mix with, like, uh, Diamond and Pearl, where we look back at it and just go... It wasn't really that great, but I still have nostalgia for it. Because um, uh, every sort of generation of Pokemon will always be someone's first generation of Pokemon. And generally, that is often always their favourite. So even though there are problems, some people will still love it. So, it just happens. It's not always the case. Gen 2 is my favourite. That was the sequel to my first gen. I mean, I agree. I am in that too. But I think since probably Gen 1 and Gen 2... That has relatively stuck in the things that I've seen, but it doesn't really matter. We're at the dojo! Ah, one of the best characters in all the game coming up now. We have his wife, Honey, here. Let's meet the master himself. It's... I really timed this poorly. There's a polygraph there. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep holding your voice. This is a child. He is their child. Oh, I noticed they fixed the name tag thing. I wonder when that came back into effect. I think that was the patch that came along with the DLC. Oh, thank bloody hell. 
there were some things that they patched in. I know one of the big concerns when the DLC was announced was like, are they gatekeeping certain Pokemon behind the paywall? And like, in terms of catching them, yes, but in terms of acquiring them, you can just have somebody else trade it over. So it's not that big of a deal, in my opinion, at least. It's, but, it's just like, you know, some Pokemon are in red, some Pokemon are in blue, some Pokemon are in the base game, some are in the Isle of Armour. Just trade with someone who has it. It's still not complete, the Pokédex, but it's growing. But here is our new friend, Mustard. You get it? Honey Mustard. They're a food team. Cheese to meet you. <laughs> we gotta play along, yeah. <laughs> it's just so perfect that really, it's just like, why wouldn't you say cheese to meet you? I see he likes our sense of humour. <laughs> I'm still mad about that. <laughs> well, you're going to have to understand, Flame. Americans are translating this stuff. They're not going to take it over to Limey Land just to, you know, recontextualise everything and stick a U where a U needs to be. Yeah, but this is based on the UK. I know where it's fucking based! I live here! Yeah, but you talk like a fucking Yank half the time too! But I work with Yanks half the time. <laughs> That's not an excuse! <laughs> oh, fuck off. Anyway, battle time while a polyrath just watches on. Man, if ever there was an evolution where it's just before but bigger, it's polyrath, but I love that motherfucker. Alright, Mustard, what you got for us? Well, a really awesome musical theme, for starters. I'm gonna kick it in the face, I am! Some of the new music they've brought in, like, there's some of the stuff that just plays while you're wandering around that I don't re really remember that much, but basically all the dojo music is really cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, but yeah. And of course he starts with a fucking flinch, both. <laughs> I, I hate it, I hate it so much. Why does it even exist except to make me mad? <laughs> well, there you answered your own question, didn't you? Oh yeah, good point, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, fun, well, not necessarily a fun thing with Mustard, but yeah, in all languages, his name basically equates to Mustard. Okay. So, German, it's Mastriche, Spanish, Mostaz, uh, French, Mustar, um, so on and so forth. Uh, honey is basically the same, um, although her sound's different in sort of the various languages, because it's Mitsuba in Japanese, which is Japanese Honeywort. Um, but also Mitsu, which is honey. Um, German Enya, which comes from Crypto Crypto Cryptotania, which is the Honewood genus. Tanya in Spanish and Italian, same thing. Apia um, comes from Apiacea, which is um, the family that contains the Honeywood genus, and also possibly Apis, which is Latin for bee. Okay, I, th I think we've reached the quote for Richie reading off Bulbapedia today. Well, we we, ha we haven't because I've got one more, which is the name of their son, which was Hyde, um, which comes from Hydrangea. Um, although in uh, German and French it's Hortensio, which is from Hortensia, which is a synonym for Hydrangea, and then in Spanish it's Idran, which somehow also comes from Hydrangea. But there we go. Okay. See, Tom, I wouldn't complain because that was a neat little distraction from you sending a flying type out against the Shinx. No, what I did wrong there was I used a move that was part flying. If I used a purely fighting thing, I probably could have... T Actually, is Shinx part dark? I need to look this up. No, it's pure electric. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, so you would have been better just using the Excadrill. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of its evolutions, though. Uh, no, no, you weren't. I don't think they're dark either, no. <laughs> No, it, it stays purely electric through its entire line. <laughs> Why the fuck is it part black then? Wow, Tom, seriously. <laughs> Look, okay. Wow, you are right, it's not electric dark. I don't know why I thought that all these years. I mean, I, I, I get it. I do like Luxray, though. I used him on my recent Platinum team. He's not the best electric type out there, but he looks like a cool little lion cat thing, so, you know, that works for me. <laughs> like, Luxray's design is incredible. Um, but yeah, I get why you think it's dark. It's because typically in Pokemon, if something has black fur or basically black anything, it's probably a dark type. But surprisingly, no. 
We're not culturally appropriating because he gave us this stuff. Man bun. Also, it's the uniform for this place. Yes, flame, man bun, but uh, we're doing it with style and dignity this time. <laughs> you can't do a man bun with style and dignity. I'm sorry to break it to you. <laughs> To be honest, uh, when I got the outfit, it was just like, right, um, so that hair is changing. I don't like that hair. And to be honest, I don't like the shorts. So I went back to my jeans because I was just like, I paid good money for these jeans. I am wearing those. Fair enough, man. So I just found one of my favourite tweets again here. Hey, nice man bun. Ha ha, it fucking sucks, you hipster asshole. He turns around and reveals he is a samurai from the Tokugawa Shogun. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Well, I was fine because I played as the girl character and her design with the dojo clothes is absolutely fine, so I guess it sucks to be you guys. Yeah, well, I don't really have any counters to that, I just don't want you to win. Yeah, like that's the low effort we're at now. <laughs> Alright, you get your stuff right there, there we go. What? Oh, I love this little mission here coming up. Oh, moved fast as lightning. Who could that pink blur have been? Oh no, po po po! We're gonna have to catch the po po. Yep, we're gonna catch the three po's. Po po and po. I like the new Slowpoke. He's grown on me a lot. Yeah, I, I still think they could have made it a bit more fancy beyond just changing some of the coloration, but for what it is, it's fine. And Galarian Slowbro is great, I think. Yeah, I am curious to see what the Slow King's going to look like, because I think whether like that could help solidify my opinion on it completely. Because like, the Slowbro becomes poison type. I wonder if they'll keep that for Slow King or whether they'll do something a bit different. I think it'll be either Dark or Ghost and it'll be sort of like a Phantom of the Opera sort of thing. Mm. Possibly, because we did see that little tease with his face covered up, didn't we? So it's got a similar sort of shape to the standard Slow King, but whether there's something going on under there, we don't know yet. God knows. I mean, it could be Poison Psychic. That might be an interesting uh, type matchup. Oh, well, that's what the slow bro is, yeah. So who knows? Keep an eye on the skies or Cerebi's Twitter, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and the closer we get to autumn, the uh, closer we get to the crown tundra. But uh, speaking of getting close, we're at the end of the part now. So we're going to stay in the uniform just while we do the trials and whatnot. Maybe we'll change that later. But for now... We're done, so we'll see you next time when our Isle of Armor coverage continues. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.